Hey everyone. I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about what we witnessed this week at our nation's capital. What we witnessed was a coordinated and collective act of domestic terrorism. And time will tell the details of who was involved and who may have helped to coordinate that act. But for now, it's enough to say that it was infuriating and it was disgusting and it was incredibly sad, but it wasn't really that surprising if you've been paying attention for the past five years. This is who this president is. It is all that he has trafficked in. This violence and this chaos and this hatred, this reckless lawlessness, this is the one note he's been singing since he started. And so there's really nothing surprising about this. As shocking as it is to see, there's nothing surprising about a man who is desperate to stay in power because he's terrified of what happens when he loses that power. A president who tried everything before the election to sabotage it and who has tried everything after to invalidate it. He's had recount after recount after recount. I mean, Joe Biden has won Georgia so many times, he's going to be president for the rest of our lives. And then there were dozens of lawsuits that he engaged in, all of which he lost, with no evidence of corruption, with no evidence of fraud in the election. He was able to convince some Republicans in Congress to perpetuate this lie on his behalf, which fueled his supporters once more. So there's nothing unreasonable about this incredibly fragile, narcissistic, egomaniacal, sociopathic president would in one final desperate act invite his sycophantic cultic supporters to go to the Capitol and essentially rescue him. What doesn't make sense is the story that many conservatives are giving us right now, that Trump supporters are telling us, the Fox News is reporting that many members of Congress who are Republicans are telling us, and that is that this terrible act of aggression on our nation's capital, targeting members of Congress, was not Trump supporters at all. It was actually Antifa. It was Black Lives Matter. It was the radical left disguised as Trump supporters. Come on. That's nonsensical. I mean, it's nonsensical at its core. To embrace this idea, you would have to believe that a group of left activists said, how can we do something terrible to a president who was already leaving? How can we disrupt something, an election result, that we're actually happy with? Well, there's no reason we would do that, but even if we did, the perfect opportunity would be this rally see, there's a Trump supporter rally that they have planned that the president has endorsed, that his family is promoting, that members of the Republican Party are talking about on social media. It's called the Rally to Save America. So these left activists decided that this would be their opportunity. They said, you know, if we get all dressed up in MAGA regalia and we uh, get tattoos of Confederate flags and we show up at this rally, you know what will probably happen? The president will probably speak, and probably at the end of this, he's going to invite everyone to go to the Capitol steps and essentially rescue him. So we'll use that as our opportunity to go and do violence and make it look like Trump supporters are doing it. And so they would have us believe, these Republicans, that these radical left activists showed up at this rally that no other Trump supporters apparently showed up to, and they sat through these incendiary violent speeches, and then the president, on cue, invited all his supporters in attendance to go to the Capitol and save him from this corrupt act. And so these radical leftists, disguised as Trump supporters, then breached barriers and confronted Capitol Police in the most heavily fortified building in our nation. And then they committed acts of violence on national television and they risked injury and arrest and even death all to make Trump supporters look bad. 
that doesn't make any sense. You know what does make sense? Is this violent, fragile, insecure, sociopathic president who is out of options and out of time, that he would decide, I need to make one desperate attempt to stay in power. And I'm going to use my sycophantic cultic supporters and I'm going to tell them to do something incredibly violent and incredibly reckless and they're going to do it. The events of this week have been so disheartening, but as one of the 81 million plus who have rejected this movement and rejected the past four years of malevolence and hatred and bigotry, democracy is holding and America is going to prevail. But the damage that this president has done will be irreparable. But as someone who is among that 81 million, I wish, Trump supporters, that you would just admit this. That you would admit that there is no mystery here. That there is no conspiracy. That there are the words of a president inciting people to violence. And there is the violence of his supporters. Don't insult our intelligence. As critically thinking people, we can see it. It's time for you to admit that. And whether you abhor it or whether you embrace it, that's another story. But the story is true. This was not Antifa. It was not the radical left. It was not Black Lives Matter. This act of unprecedented aggression and violence targeting members of Congress was MAGA, what MAGA has always been. Angry, bitter, hate-addled, lawless, white terrorism. It's time we admit it. It's time that you admit it.